Hello, I am Chris Park with Cordell Medical in Richmond, Virginia. In this segment, we will introduce you to the Criticare 8100 EP1. This monitor has an easy to read 10.4 inch color screen, monitors ECG, SPO2, heart rate, temperature, respiration, measures NIBP as the cuff inflates, and monitors capnography with side stream technology. On the back of the monitor, there is a port for electronic medical records, factory software port, ECG output, nurse call interface, and a DB15 video port for flat screen televisions. This is the AC power connection, the chassis ground, and battery door. There's a real-time printer included on this model. On the left side panel, there is an ECG connection, an SPO2 connection, a temperature cable socket, and an NIBP connection. Also the water trap connection. The EP1 has easy to use menus and dedicated function keys. The rotary menu knob can be turned left or right to make selections from any of the menus that appear on the front display. The selected menu option can then be activated by pressing the knob. There are nine dedicated function keys. the on-off button, standby, NIBP, NIBP cycle stat, trend, freeze, print, default, and silence. Press the power key to activate the patient monitor. Press and hold to turn it off. Press the standby key to turn it on and press it again to turn it off. The, the NIBP button manually starts the blood pressure. Press it again to stop. NIBP cycle stat sets the NIBP cycle time. Right now it's set for five minutes. You can set that time for wherever you desire. The trend button views past vital signs. You may also clear the trend memory here by pressing and holding the trend key. You hold that down and you can scroll down to clear trends. I'm going to go ahead and leave those trends for now. The next button down is freeze. Freezes all waves on the screen. Press again to resume a continuous waveform display. Press the print key to begin printing. And this is a graphical display. Press and hold to print a trend. Press the default key momentarily to access the custom default profiles. Here you can move be between profiles and accept whichever one you desire.
press the silence key momentarily to begin a preset time of alarm silence. Right now it's set at two minutes. Press and hold the key to permanently silence the alarms. Have the infinite sign above. Press the key again a second time to resume normal alarms. Every time the monitor turns on, it performs an auto calibration lasting about 10 seconds. Right now we're just scrolling through the different screens. All right, that's the alarm screen. Um, you can set the different patient sizes at this point. Uh, you've got your high and low alarms that you can set here. Press escape and going on to params. Uh, here is what, where you would set all your parameters. This is setting your volumes, your heart rate volumes. And you can set different colors for your different uh, parameters. There are different settings for the measurement of uh, CO2. That's N2O compensation if you desire that, if you need that. usually have the blood pressure uh, a tone turned off and respiration is on when you're using CO2 on to display and this is typically what it would look like uh, uh, setting up the display in uh, the CO2 mode That's your mini trend setting at the bottom. And these are your print settings. We have it set for graphical. Have all the other automated prints turned off so you're just not wasting paper uh, during the case. It prints ECG. We have uh, the second waveform turned off. You can turn on. Uh, the CO2 uh, to print, or you can turn on SpO2 to print, or PLETH as they call it. And going on to config, this is where you would set your time and date and so forth. And also that's where you would set your freeze timeout. Right now it's set for two minutes. And uh, that's how that's where you would go to set your simulation mode in order to set simulation uh, you would set that as P I A 418 that is your password to get into simulation mode and you see that it says no just scroll to say yes and when you say yes to that, then simulation mode pops up on the screen. Now press the NIBP button 12 times. That'll just give you a number of vital signs on the screen. So that simulates a case pretty well. When you go to print, uh, it'll print up uh, a, a Pressing the print button once uh, gives you one uh, set of vital signs, and pressing and holding, of course, will give you the mini trend. Now, here is where we can press and hold and change between uh, our, our functions. If we accept that, right now we're going to go to ECG, SPO2, NIBP. And so now, at this point, we are out of CO2 mode. And it's nice to be able to switch back and forth between the two. 
because you do not want to continually taking the water trap on and off. And those are the normal settings you'll see uh, when you're not using uh, entitled CO2. Now press and hold the default button if you would like to change your defaults. Uh, this passcode is LIA608. And you would use this uh, in order to set... Well, you don't always get it right the first time. That's LIA608. So don't feel bad if you uh, press in the, the code incorrectly. Now here you can go ahead and uh, uh, select uh, how you want to accept this set of defaults. Actions complete, press the button again, and then it will maintain uh, this set of defaults. Now if you want to move to another set of defaults with CO2, just scroll, you know, just keep pushing the button and uh, spin to accept, press again, that action is complete, and now you are back in entitled CO2 mode. Okay, these are the supplies we need to sample entitled CO2. Uh, looking at the uppermost line, all right, this is the divided nasal cannula. This samples CO2 as well as administers oxygen. It's divided right there in the middle as you see that. It's oxygen and CO2. One connects to the oxygen tank and the other connects to the uh, monitor. And that is the uh, SO443. That's a 10-foot divided nasal cannula. That's used also when you're not using a nasal hood. Here we have a nasal cannula, seven feet. This is the number 4,000. Uh, that goes at the nostrils. And the other, other side goes to the monitor and connects into the water trap. Now this is just a straight sample line. This is the number 4510. One side goes to the monitor, one, one side goes to the patient. Uh, and one of the ways that's done is people can install the lure lock right straight into the nasal hood, as you see in that picture right there. To puncture that, you can use a needle or you can use a, uh, a punch, a set of punch pliers. That's a number 72 punch pliers that comes from uh, uh, Home Depot for about $10. This is the water trap that fits into the side of the monitor. Okay, here I'm going to show how to insert the water trap onto the monitor. Uh, you've got a lock on the bottom of it. That's to uh, remove the water trap. Okay, so just uh, hold it and uh, slide it up into the monitor and in. Make sure it's secure. Uh, grab one of your sample lines and a lure will just simply uh, go straight in and to the right. Now this lure, you can cut that end off if you do not want to uh, puncture a hole in your expensive nasal hood. And you can put it into the patient's nostril and just uh, tape it above the lip and put the nasal hood just over top of that. Or you can just uh, use a uh, nasal cannula and that uh, can also fit underneath the nasal hood uh, the same way. Okay, we'll take that out and set up 
set that off to the side. Now to remove this you just press in on the locks. Uh, just to remove that right there, just press in on those locks and then just let it drop straight down and you're in pretty good shape there. That's off the monitor this point. Okay, we're going to go ahead and turn the monitor on. Uh, and again, it'll go through its CO2 calibration. Uh, the calibration appears on the screen uh, for about, or the zero cal appears for about five seconds and then goes into about 10 seconds of calibration. All right, we'll go ahead and set the uh, uh, water trap in place and we'll insert a uh, nasal cannula or one of the cannulas. Yeah, just insert it straight on into the water trap and turn it to the right. And I'll go ahead and just start uh, breathing into the nasal cannula. Just takes a few moments and it starts to uh, uh, pick up. Right now it's going through, it's, it's uh, noticing that I'm breathing into it so it does a calibration. Goes through about 10 seconds of calibration. And then starts measuring entitled CO2. I will now take that uh, nasal cannula off and uh, we have this thing set to uh, go to an apnea alarm I believe in about 30 seconds yep there goes the alarm And we'll turn, you know, uh, shut the alarm. The alarm is off. And thank you very much for watching.